with these two moves you made at the deadline here. Uh, can you take us through your thought process on that and why you thought that they were the right moves to make at this time? Sure. Um, uh, we added uh, a center back, a long, what we view as a long-term signing. Um, it was the oldest position group uh, in the club, uh, and we feel like we want to bring a little bit more balance there. Uh, we thought this was a player, uh, you know, uh, this deal popped up. It's a player we had tracked for a long time, and, and uh, we, we thought we could get a reasonable value on the player at this time. So we moved pretty quickly. The whole deal came together in about a week, um, and, you know, we're really happy to, to add uh, – Ariaga to the club uh, and with Joven obviously we all know Joven and Joven's done really well here and excited to have him back and so I think that that gives us a little bit more uh, attacking depth and, and uh, more, some more options but Joven's obviously a real versatile player uh, left back left wing um, flip him over play him inverted as a right winger so um, really felt like we had we addressed uh, one area long term in center back and another area uh, of that attacking uh, presence that we thought would uh, would improve the team. It's not super common for a defender to be a designated player. Um, what did, with Javier, what did you guys see that made you think that he was worth that type of big investment? This is, uh, and I know I drive you guys batty sometimes with my corporate terms, but this is an accounting mechanism. Um, under the salary cap, the most efficient way to structure this transaction was to call him a DP. We transitioned Victor from DP to uh, TAM, um, but Javier is a player who we can later transition from DP to TAM. So it, it actually really is a literal accounting mechanism that we are using, and that's why we did it this way. And so um, although we paid a transfer fee for Javier, which is why he's a DP, it made sense to do that. And, this, and you know, this, this is literally the, the, the kind of essence of how this deal came together. We figured out that we had this opening. We could get this player at this price with this mechanism. Um, and a ton of credit to Ravi Ramenini, our, our salary cap guru and, data, and head of analytics. Um, and usually Ravi's uh, doing our player evaluations and helping the coaching staff, and, but he's also our cap guy. And, and this, this, this was creative to figure out how to put this together and still preserve our options for the summer where uh, we had the ability to potentially buy down Ariaga and still keep our, our doors open there. So uh, it was... Uh, fortuitous how it came together and, and uh, a lot of people worked really hard over the last week to get it done and um, I'd also like to thank the league office because I know <laughs> sometimes we get frustrated or, or you know it's, the perception is that the teams don't always work in, in hand in hand but um, between Connor and Andrew and Christina and Sarah and uh, Chris Savino at the league office all of those folks were all hands on deck for the last five days uh, to get this deal over the line and we're really grateful for their help. Speaking of the summer, uh, you talked about you still have some flexibility. Could you take us through a little bit about uh, what you may be able to add in the summer and where you may be looking uh, if you do? I think it depends how we play. Uh, you know, I think uh, we've tried to be patient and we've tried to take a long-term view. Uh, and so as to where we'll, we look to upgrade, I think it will depend on how players perform. You know, you know uh, as one starting point, we're not sure exactly where Joven's going to go. Uh, and so uh, what happens with him probably has a knock-on effect then as to how the team is set up. Um, we have a lot of really good center backs. I mean, you know, we probably have the best set of left backs in the league. We probably have the best set of center backs in the league at this point. So, you know, what does the marketplace feel about that? Um, you know, do we get offers for any of those guys? You know, how do they perform? Who's healthy? Who's not like... And, you know, what we've done here is we feel like we've we've really just got a, as much depth as, as we've ever had since I've been here. I'll, I'll tell you that. And we got two months to kind of evaluate and say, how's it look? You know, how are we doing? You know, building, building off of that, your team has played pretty well to this point. Record's pretty good, slumped a little bit lately. But what have you seen then um, that sort of compelled you to upgrade right now um, based off of how you played up until this point? Nothing to do with our record, honestly, Matt. Um, you know, I... Uh, I mean, the center back position, as I said, is, is I mean, to bring a 24-year-old in a position group that has, a, you know, I'm going to get the ages wrong, but 32, 34, and 30, I think, um, was kind of a no-brainer from a, from a, you know, again, this thing just, this thing popped up and, a, a, you know, guy who was on the top of our list for a long time. And um, so you want to you swoop and you get value, we got, we got value here. So um, that was, that, that was the, the, the Ariaga transaction. And then Joven is, is, you know, to be honest, is a unique a transaction as you're going to get, right? I mean, it's a player that the club knows very well. Um, it's a, a player that we know is going to fit in with the group that we won the title with. And um, again, when that opportunity uh, came up, um, you know, and again, we've been in touch with Joven since he left here. And the, maybe the one interesting thing about Joven is that it's the culmination of a kind of two-year play uh, by us. Um, when we went to the expansion draft with LAFC, um, 
we exposed, we basically made a deal with LAFC and we said, look, if we leave Tyler Miller out, will you take him? Uh, and the reason we did that was because we wanted to protect this asset specifically, Jovan Jones, because we thought he would probably come back at some point. Uh, and so that judgment's now been, been proven correct, and we saw an opportunity we were able to bring Jovan back. And so the Jovan one is almost like a, a moment of opportunity kind of thing. Like, you know, we've been in, in communication with him, again, since he left, and, and he's, he's friends with lots of guys on the team and stuff. And, um, you know, Darmstadt got to a point where they were willing to let him go, and, and we said, sure, we'd love to have him back. And um, so uh, that's, that's how it came together. Carl, what does he say about schedule Brad? in terms of uh, acquisition? I know you mentioned that, that he was somebody that you guys would keep your eyes on, but w was he available a lot sooner than you thought he would be in order, in order to come back over here, Joven? Joven. Oh, sorry, I missed the first part of you, Jose. Uh, I don't know if it was earlier, later, or whatever. I mean, he, yeah, you know, I think that's a great question to ask Joven, you know, as to, as to you know, why, why now? And, you know, because honestly, we got a call from his agent. I don't know. It's no more than two weeks ago. Uh, I bet it was even a week ago. And was like, hey, we can do this now. And again, we've been kind of saying, is it now? Is it next summer? Is it next year? Because um, Joven was out of contract in the summer of 2020. And so we got the call. And honestly, my first thing I said was, man, we, don't have, we can't do this now. And then I went down the hall and I said, Robbie, is there a way we can pull this off? And Rob, Robbie's like, you know, hold my beer, <coughs> and uh, he doesn't, Robbie doesn't drink. Um, <coughs> and uh, you know, he came back 24 hours later after a bunch of conversations with these league guys that, that put in all the time, and said, "Hey, you know, turns out we can." So I called Joe Sager back and I said, "Hey, if it's literally this number right here on this piece of paper, <laughs> like we can do this." Uh, and so they're like, "All right, we'll we'll talk to Darmstadt," and they did that, and we got talked to Darmstadt and. We got the transfer fee put in next year, which is the only way we could swing the deal this year. And, uh, you know, here we are. And, and let's just say I, uh, I wouldn't be upset if the cap went up next year. In your experience, how often do deals uh, like this two years in the making go through um, seamless, seamlessly, I mean, basically? Yeah, I mean, it was never seamlessly. I don't ever want to per portray that. I mean, I, these other guys, you know, have heard me say, I mean, I think 95% of deals fail. So, uh there was definitely this yaha moment about five, probably like last Thursday or so. And then like, could we really pull this off? <laughs> just everything fell into place. I mean, we, 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 we have been grinding, man. I mean, it, it has been uh, literally, this, this is the general manager's life, right? Like I'm literally getting up and uh, going to bed, talking to Germany, getting up, talking to Ecuador and everything in between all day. And, and uh, you know, and you got your team of guys working with you. And uh, so did I think that we could pull it off? Honestly, I was like, Hey, we had we had this map and like <laughs> had to work in these five steps in this way, and everybody had to agree to it. And we were fortunate; everybody agreed to it, and and we got it done. It, it, you've said a couple times, many times, that uh, the summer window is an easier window to deal in, probably in large part because a lot of these contracts are over or there's a lull or whatever reason. But to get two of these deals done, it sounds like as recently as a week or two ago, you were ready to do no deals. Um, I mean, what, I guess how close were you to not doing anything? And, um, and what about this window made it possible to get this done? Specific circumstances. So both Darmstadt and Barcelona had achieved the position in the table that they wanted to achieve. And so by virtue of that security, they're like, hey, well, if we can get paid on a deal with two weeks left in our season, let's do it. And so that, that's the nature of these deals. These deals were not, literally weren't possible at the end of April. But given results and how the table shaped up for these two specific teams on these two specific players, you know, it basically became the summer transfer window accelerated. And, that, and that's maybe the analogy I draw, uh, Jeremiah, was we, we were, you know, we, I think we're, we do a pretty good job of being patient and, and taking the right deal and the best deal. And just that these two ones accelerated themselves forward and we saw a chance and so we said, all right, let's, let's do it now. But look, the, the practical impact, just to, not to overstate this, is both these guys are going to be out for a couple of weeks getting visas uh, and before they can come into the United States. Um, uh, Jobin's going to get called into the Gold Cup team for Trinidad, uh, and it's very possible that Ariaga could get called in, into the Copa America team uh, with Ecuador. So um, the fact is that these guys aren't going to necessarily, between now and July 9, you know, before you hail us too much, I, I don't know how much these guys are going to be on the field in the, in the next couple of months. And so, I, you know, it's important to say, you know, I still think we got a really good team. And, and you know, Matt, to your point, I, I don't know that this changes us a whole lot over the next 
eight weeks. Sorry, Jada. Um, but I do think long term that they're good. They're good moves for the club, and they give us they give us options, and they give us um, they, they prevent us from getting backed into a corner uh, in terms of some of the long long term stuff of the club. And not to get too lost in the weeds, but how I don't know. Maybe this is even better for offline. But um, I mean, how does the TAM like? How much does this affect the budget if you were to bring these guys in in the summer instead of bringing them in now? Uh, it. it, it Big impact, big impact, because we had said, you know, our, in all our initial planning, we had said we couldn't afford a DP until the summer. Um, and, uh, you know, that's how it's incentivized, right? All the TAM dollars are dollar for dollar. So literally, the you know, you wait a week, you're spending less money. You wait a month, you're spending less money than that. You wait, you know, till the summer, you're spending less money than that. And so it's just, it's all continuum. And, and again, like, look, this, this is all... Again, I'd love to tell you how smart we all are, but the reality is that because we didn't get Hurtado closed at the end of summer last year, we had a bunch of mo- we had a pot of money that we were that we had available to us that we could spend this year, um, you know. So this is this is the ebbs and the flows, and that's pro sports. And you miss this one, and this one pops up, and you know this is the good news about you know from that bad news. So um, we were able to you know hopefully hopefully capitalize on. It. I mean, obviously we got to get these guys here, we got to get them playing. Um, but you know what I was happy about is we were able to complete these transactions, even if we won't see them a ton between now and July, um, and we still kept our options open for you know what our original plan was, which was uh, potentially uh, maybe, a, I don't know if you want to call it bigger, more impactful, but another DP level signing potentially uh, if we can find the right deal in the summer. Ariaga is a little bit younger than what you typically used to bring in for this much money. What was different about him and being able to bring him at 24 years old? Captain. He was captain of his team. Uh, when our scouts got down there to see him, uh, he was very clearly organizing their team. And we see guys in leadership positions. Um, you know, I think one of the criticisms of the Ecuadorian league that I would make is that um, there are a couple of clubs that dominate that league. And when you're not playing in Copa Libertadores and you're not playing the big clubs, not every game, not every week's a hard week, not every not every week's a big game. And so it's, it differs from MLS that way. Um, but I'd had success with a player named uh, Jao Plata that we brought to uh, Salt Lake. Uh, a couple of years ago, and so we were, I was familiar with the market. Chris Henderson obviously is, um, but Chris and Sean Henderson both went down to see Ariaga uh, and some other guys, and they both really liked him, both raved about his leadership skills, and that's the kind of profile. If you're going to take a younger one, uh, I think that's the kind of profile that we will really want to identify as somebody who's very comfortable organizing and leading. As far as I know, this deal got done pretty quickly, just within days. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the negotiation with Barcelona? Sure. Yeah, it, I mean, it was something where, again, this is a player we had tracked for a while, and, and it was always going to be a bunch of money, and we're like, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to, honestly, we said we're not going to make a, sign a DP center back. We're going to, we're going to save it and do it later. And then the price came down, and so, again, while, while we call this a DP deal, it's, it's you know, minimal seven-figure deal and that allows us then to restructure and that keeps again so now we can do the deal all of a sudden and we can keep our options open for the summer when is the target date for them to arrive uh i don't i don't know yet jada uh in look broadly speaking hopefully at some point in the next week or two but uh that's out of our control that's a government process and so we get in trouble actually when when uh uh we put a date on something then the government says well wait but you know, we didn't tell you that. You didn't. You know, you can't make that promise. I'd, I'd rather than uh, represent something. I'll just say we don't know. They'll come when the government wants them to come, and they're they're convinced that they're safe and cleared and going to be good uh, uh, American residents for the next uh, period of time. Is it proper to read too much um, into Brad Smith's uh, future based on these moves? Uh, we love Brad Smith. I think he's done great for us. Uh, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we would love for him to stay. I met with his agent last week. Had a good positive meeting with them. Um, we're hopeful. We're hopeful that, that Brad can stay with us past uh, July. Um, this has no impact on that whatsoever. Again, uh, Joven can play left wing, he can play left back. You always need at least two left backs no matter what. Um, so if a player uh, with Joven's flexibility, I think, helps us. And again, Joven can even flip over, play on the other side potentially. So this has I, nothing to do with Brad, uh, from our perspective at least. Uh, that, that transaction at the end of the day is out of our control. I mean, again, Bournemouth owns him. But form that the size is, is what we'll go for. But unequivocally, uh, we think Brad's done a great job, and we want Brad to stay. You got to see LAFC up close and personal twice recently. Um, how do you think that your group matches up with sort of the very best teams in the league right now, and how do these two moves impact that sort of feel, if at all? I, I don't take much away from the LAFC games just because I, I thought we were pretty beat up. And, and, and yet, look, I mean, if you go into a playoffs and we have three starters out in the playoffs, like, 
we may lose a close game in the playoffs then too. But uh, I'd love to play in full strength before I make any kind of real strategic analysis of it. Um, you know, look, we did want to, you know, we did want to reinforce. I mean, uh, we, we feel like Joven allows us to set up our team in a couple of different ways to make us more unpredictable and to really give us, a, you know, another dynamic option, even even if Joven were to come off the bench. So uh, that, I think, helps us. And um, because, look, I mean, it, we know, it, if you look at the, the attacking subs we used, right, Will Bruin, Harry Ship, and Walla Buana primarily, um, all of those guys have done well, all of them. But if you bring in a player, Joven, is Joven maybe a little bit more experienced? Uh, maybe, eh, to be fair, not, not than Will or Harry, but we think can be in fact in a different way. I mean, Buana bon is really the only dribbler we have in the team. Joven's very, very good on the ball. He can add that skill going at people, and he's got a little bit of pace as well. So anyway, he adds to the diversity of our attack. We thought that was really important to do, to be able to show a different look when we needed to. Uh, and at center back, again, this was one where, <clears throat> look, it, we, we said we're in the mature part of our cycle, right? we got to win now. Um, the other thing that we've always talked about is Champions League. So if a real impactful center back is available now, maybe if from an efficiency standpoint it's, it's six months too early, I'd rather sign him now and now have our team locked, you know, if we are successful, if we qualify for Champions League. Now in January, we're hitting the ground running and we're saying, all right, we're taking a shot at, at winning this thing too. So um, yeah, that's the other part, Nico, to your question, bringing in a 24-year-old. Like, the reality is we got Chad Marshall, we got Roman Torres, we got Kim Kihi, Gustav Svensson can play there. Like, there's no pressure on this kid. Like, he, he doesn't need to come in. He, he doesn't need to have a DP impact. This isn't Ladero. This isn't Roy Diaz. This is a younger guy. Um, you know, he's not played outside of Ecuador. Uh, the significance of that is it's probably going to take him more time to transition. And so there is not an expectation on our part that he needs to come in and be an all-star from day one. Obviously, we hope that that's the outcome. But, again, we believe we have a lot of choices there, a lot of good choices there, um, and guys that have played well. I mean, the, the, the thing that I would take away from the last – you know, rougher stretch, Matt, is I'm really impressed with our depth. I thought nuhu has been good. Delem's been good. Vaughn has been good. Harry's been good. Uh, Bruin's been good. So, you know, that was the maybe the, the question mark that I think a lot of people had of the group. Like, the, the starting 11 was very good, but they weren't sure about the rest. But, you know, I was, I was very happy with how we played in those circumstances and how those guys did relative to our expectations. And uh, I think this just reinforces our team and, and you know, I think makes us – uh, I think the phrase I used uh, at some point yesterday was, hopefully this makes us slump-proof. Because once we get these two guys in, there really aren't bad choices at that point. I mean, if, if you got six guys hurt at the same time, sure, that could still knock you back. But um, we should have, you know, one or two good answers at basically every spot on the field now and, and hopefully take a shot at winning this thing. You know, a couple of years ago, uh, you lost Joven in part because the league wouldn't let you sign him to a, a TAM deal. Um, to bring him now in on a TAM deal, is that saying more about the way that the league has changed, or is it something about actually going to Europe and coming back from Europe that makes guys easier to get TAM contracts for? Um, what I would say is that the league uh, puts in place rules and mechanisms, and it's our job to navigate those. Uh, and so uh, we did our best to navigate it back then, and we, we're doing our best now. And within those rules, we'll try to find opportunities where we can. And, and uh, we thought that we got one here. And again, we're, we're grateful to the league and, and, the, and the help that they provided us in helping pull this transaction together uh, at the last minute before the close of the window. Uh, regarding uh, New Who, uh, you've obviously now got four talented uh, left backs. Uh, what can you tell us about? Or three, excuse me, three. Okay, I was going to say, I did yeah. a bunch. <laughs> Yeah, three. Uh, what can you tell us about what this means for uh, a young player like New who, assuming that you are successful in keeping Brad Smith here, then you will have three uh, for the rest of the year. Yeah, I mean, it, it, th there's the critical point, right, is we, we don't yet know the disposition of what happens with Brad Smith. So, again, difficult to answer what that means for New who. Um, you know, again, if, if we come back, because this is going to, how the Joven thing plays out, let's say Joven comes back and he looks best as a left wing option. Um, now Brad Smith leaves. Now New Hoosier starting left back. So that's a completely different scenario than Brad stays and Jobin's more comfortable in defense. And, you know, it can play out. There's just, just a whole continuum of ways this can play out. Um, New Who's a good young player. I think he's got a very specific skill set that helps us as a lockdown defender. Uh, he's a guy, a guy who's really cool to bring in at the end of games and, and close games out. Um, and the kid's talented. I mean, he, he's a very good player. Uh, and so, look, if we do get into this world where maybe we're stacked up, as we've said with all of our young players, this, you know, including the Academy Defiance guys, we bring them up, um, we'll get them out on loan.
you know, or, or if there are teams that want to buy them and, and, and we want to sell them, we can find that. We'll do that too. So um, this is no way intended to block New Who. Um, and we'll look at, you know, if we wind up in this high class problem of having three elite left backs, yeah, you might see us loan one out or, or, uh, or sell one this summer. Just to be clear, so you had nothing on the table to um, finalize last week, basically? Uh, you know, the, the short answer is yes, that's accurate. Um, the longer answer is, had neither of these things popped up, I don't think we just would have, you know, put our hands under our desk and stopped working and, and kept working. You know, th there were trades within the league that are always uh, tossed around, and you know, these were the best deals, and these are the best deals that came together late. So um, that part was fortuitous. But uh, and, and look, you know, I think Jeremiah touched on this uh, before. We've done more of our impactful deals, the Ladero, the Rui Diaz, the Victor Rodriguez, the Kelvin Leardham in the summer. Again, not because it's a particular preference of ours, but just that's where the world market is. That's when contracts end and players are available. Uh, and so I think basically all what we did is we kind of pulled off two summer window transactions two months early. Again, with a caveat that, you know, that's great, but they're going to go to Copa America possibly. They're going to go to Gold Cup possibly. Of that two-month advantage we gained, we're probably going to give one month back right away. And so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really... Uh, I know it's a it's a gradation thing. It's a it's a small advantage. <laughs>